So today we're going to talk about AI being used to resurrect the dead. This article is from El País. Katarzyna Novacek Bajinka, researcher, it will be normal for many people to want to chat with their deceased loved ones. The professor at the University of Cambridge studies how the consequences of digital immortality will affect us. Technology already makes it possible to create avatars of our ancestors to converse with them, as if they were still alive. Now, as you might imagine, I'm really against this stuff. I'm going to be the stick in the mud here. I've discussed previously the Black Mirror episode, Be Right Back, in which Hayley Atwell's character of Martha has a digital version of her dead boyfriend, Ash, created using social media posts, images and videos, and she's able to talk to him on the phone. And eventually she puts this AI into an Android duplicate. It's creepy as hell. The Android part may not be possible yet, but sadly the AI technology is there. Uh, to make it possible to create simulations of dead people. The article says, For almost a decade, researcher Katarzyna novacek Bajinka has been analysing what death and mourning will be like in a digital world. I shudder to think. There are already companies, especially in the US and China, that offer services which turn our ancestors into avatars, with whom we can chat. Some deceased individuals have already spoken at their own funerals, or at the trial of their killers. Let's correct this, as if it needs to be said. No deceased individuals have spoken or ever done anything ever. These are nothing more than language models with convincing text-to-speech systems using recreations of the dead person's voice. Why can we not just let the dead rest? Every culture has its own relationship with the afterlife. Each family experiences the loss of their loved ones in its own way. But artificial intelligence will allow for the creation of a new relationship with some deceased individuals that will depend on new business, ethical and legal decisions. It's an issue, as with most innovations, that appears before societies and governments get to reflect on it. Yeah, this is the issue with many fast-moving technologies and brand new consumer products. They get made available to the public before we as a society get to seriously process and weigh up the ramifications of normalizing them. So there's a QA and a with Katarzyna and she's asked a question, will we still go visit cemeteries in 2030? Answer, that's going to change. When we visit a cemetery, it's usually not that often. And when you have your dead loved ones in your pockets, in your phone, You can easily access this person online almost 24-7, which means that it will definitely change the way we communicate with the dead and the way we spend time with them. I barely know where to start with that. Putting aside how how sad it is to converse with a chatbot to begin with, it's so much worse when they might be bearing the face and voice of a dead loved one. This is simply not healthy for a person and doesn't fully enable them to move on, in my view. Uh, Moving on from the dead is a a healthy, natural and vital part of life. It's part of living. We remember the dead, uh, but we also must understand that that life and death are connected. They're part of a cycle, uh, much like the planet has seasons. Death and birth are universal constants and they are at opposite ends of the spectrum. Older generations give way to their offspring, okay? And what I can stand is that an AI-driven industry is rising up now in what's called uh, grief tech or, or grief bots or something like this. And it's sold to people as helping them cope with loss. But in truth, this industry only exists because there's money to be made. Okay, companies that will offer these services are making money off desperate, lonely and vulnerable, bereaved people. Now, some people will ask, what's the alternative? Are you okay with someone going through the trauma and pain of grief and loss? Where's your humanity and compassion? Well, actually, uh, the humanity and compassion stems from the fact that I don't want people living in delusions that will actually make them worse. Yes, uh, people do have to experience pain in life. I'm sorry, but we're human. And in order for us to grow, become stronger and mature, we must have a healthy relationship with death. Uh, We must go through the full gamut of emotions. The issue with tech like this is that on one level, the person will know that the AI isn't really their dead loved one. They'll know their loved one is actually dead. 
But on the other hand, they have this kind of cognitive dissonance where they will continue to have a kind of relationship with them. So they kind of live in two worlds. That's not healthy. Uh, essentially, it delays or undercuts or suppresses their need to grieve. I've lost a parent myself, and although it was horrible, I'm glad I went through that process and that I didn't medicate away my emotions or try to shortcut them or dodge them uh, by using some app. This is going to potentially cause grieving people to live in denial. And it, it will just probably extend the, the grieving process. There might even be people so desperate that they'll convince themselves that some part of the, of the soul of their loved one lives on in the AI, as if they've transitioned from their dead body into the AI. And they now live in an app on their phone. There's probably people who are going to think this. And of course, there's going to be people who are dying who, you know, before they die, they're going to give permission. They're going to give the, the blessing to their family uh, to create an AI avatar of them. I'm actually still against that as well. Uh, because I think it's it's facilitating a very unhealthy relationship with death and it's coddling people. It's treating them like their children. Uh, we don't need to pathologize grief as being like a sickness or a condition. It's not. It's an essential part of life. I do not see any good coming out of these AI grief bots at all. So this woman goes on to say, I think that it will increase the intensity of these relations because when our dead loved ones are accessible through these platforms, when these conversations can be immersive and engaging for us, when these technologies are designed to engage us as users, I think it might be tempting for us to use these technologies. Maybe at some point, visiting cemeteries will be an old-fashioned practice because it's not more interactive than using technology. I don't need everything to be interactive. I, I don't, because I don't see life through, through the technology lens all the time. It's not more engaging. It won't be like having your luck. I don't need grief or the memory of my loved one to be entertaining. Not everything in life has to be about dopamine hits. It won't be like having your loved one on a video call or in an app with whom you can talk whenever you want. Now, there's, there's lots I could say in response to that, but I think my issue there is, for me, it, it's a major philosophical and ethical difference in thinking. I just, I cannot relate to this kind of thinking. It's completely at odds with my position. To me, these AI grief apps cheapen the life and legacy of a dead loved one by reducing them to a simulacrum on a smartphone app. It seems modern smart technology knows no bounds in bringing convenience into our lives, including streamlining and bypassing the grieving process. How convenient. Question, will the technology we're most likely to use be an AI chatbot generated with messages from our deceased relative? Answer, yes, those grief bots or post-mortem avatars are the most likely and also the most controversial application. A technology created from our digital footprint that represents us or our loved ones after death. This technology and this particular application of AI in this so-called digital afterlife industry can profoundly change the ways in which we engage with deceased loved ones and change social cultural norms and practices. Again, you're not engaging with deceased loved ones at all. Your deceased loved one will be in the ground or in an urn, okay? They're not actually on your phone. The chatbot is a trick. It's an illusion. The real world is actually, to me, scarier than dystopian sci-fi now at this point. Do we know the consequences of using this type of avatar? Not yet. It's such a new phenomenon that we don't yet have clear research or results. There are teams in different parts of the world trying to conduct studies to closely observe how people use it and what effect it has on their well-being or grieving process. But for now, there's no solid evidence or data on the real implications of using this technology. For me, the consequences can be intuited. Right? It should be obvious. I don't need data or research to tell me what conventional wisdom has always known. You don't mess with the grieving process. Such a technology will enable the user to deny the death of their loved one, at least on some level, and that is not healthy. Question. This will change what it means to die? Answer. Yes, absolutely. It will definitely change the way in which we perceive experience and understand grief, death and dying because these technologies are trying to offer us a completely new experience where saying goodbye isn't finite. It's more like, see you later. 
It's like a change of status. You're no longer in the flesh, but you can become immortal. I'm only referring to what these companies are trying to convince us of. What I would say to anybody who feels this way about death, or who could be so cavalier about the passing of their loved one, I would say, you know, where's the dignity and respect? If you think you can just make a copy of them and download it onto your phone, like, that's good enough, close enough to the real thing. You know, this is how little you would think of your loved one. That you can now emotionally connect just as easily to a digital knockoff than you would with the real person. As for that creepy part about, it's like a change of status, you're no longer in the flesh, but you can become immortal. I think what fuels this kind of thinking is the effect of social media on relationships and how people engage with each other. It's totally unnatural. Like, you know, updating your relationship status from in a relationship to single, and now it's like change your status to no longer in the flesh or whatever to, you know, being immortal or, or an AI, which sounds almost transhuman to me. But more than that, there is no immortality here. The dead person is still dead, regardless as to whether someone creates an AI bot that looks and sounds just like them or not. Question, you'll come back from your husband's funeral and ask, what did you think? Did you like the music and what your brother-in-law said? Answer, exactly, it already happens. Someone created an avatar of their grandfather and right after the funeral asked him, how are you? It's very thought-provoking. No, it's not. It's highly disturbing. I think disrespectful to the dead. What's the main concern? I have a long list of worries. The first is that this entire industry is run by private companies. The form it takes depends on what its founders and the people who run them decide almost arbitrarily. This should change. We should open the door to more stakeholders and make room for professionals who truly have experience in death-related issues. That would be a first step, professionalizing the digital afterlife industry. Actually, fundamentally, I don't believe we should be opening this Pandora's box in the first place. I don't believe we need an afterlife industry, all right? Just because the technology is there to do something doesn't mean we should do that something. I'm going to leave the full article for you to check out below. It's linked in the description box. But make no mistake and mark my words... This is going to be a thing. How is this a thing, you might ask? Well, it's going to be a thing in the not-so-distant future. Uh, yeah, family members, friends, work colleagues, neighbours, people you know, lots of people in your life are going to be talking about this stuff. They're going to be using AI chatbots to, to talk to their lost loved ones. And some people will, will come to their senses and they will realise uh, it's not really helping them and it's actually delaying and repressing the mourning process. Um, it's probably deepening their trauma. Some will realize how hollow it is. Uh, living a lie like this is exactly the same as using a chatbot as your virtual child, having a, a virtual child as opposed to having a real one, um, or having a romance with an AI. It's probably worse, actually. But I can actually foresee a situation where funeral directors who who offer you, you know, the type of coffin you want or the headstone design or something. I think in the future, they're also going to have this optional extra where they'll make you a, a chatbot app for your dead loved one to help honor their memory and, and keep something of them alive. You know, this sort of thing. This is how they'll sell it. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. AI just seems to ruin everything. By, by using AI to recreate a dead person, you're turning them into a commercial product. Uh, we have to let the dead rest, not just for them, but for ourselves and for the essential human requirement to heal. Using the AI to quote-unquote resurrect the dead is like picking at a scab forever. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.